Hey guys, welcome to this video. So in this one, I'm going to show you a trick, which is a bit like glue compression. Basically, the idea is to take the master, um, the, the finished mix, and instead of doing normal glue compression, you will do a parallel, uh, parallel glue compression, which is going to be more extreme. So the way I do it uh, is that I... Um, so first, let's listen to the mix. Right, so some drums, sounds pretty cool. Um, but to create more movement and more interaction between the drums and the orchestra, what we can do is first boost the transients a lot. So what this does is that it just boosts the transients massively. Let me sh just show you if I bypass the rest of the processing. Right, so... So this is just this plugin. As you can see, it's just hyping the transients uh, and the drums like crazy. But then what we want to do is squash the mix with the compressor. So after this mix is transient boosted, we squash it. And what this does is that it will bring uh, the whole level down on the drums. So as the drums happen, it's going to dug the whole mix, including the horns and sustain elements and everything. So it sounds like that. Now you got a mix that basically is pumping around um, the drums. And so if we mix that in parallel with the dry signal, it just adds a little bit of interaction and uh, envelope shaping around the drums. And it makes the drums feel louder without actually having to turn them up. It just makes them breathe a bit better with the mix. So you don't need much actually, but let me make, let me make it a bit more obvious. Of course, there is going to be some level changes here because it's hard to level match perfectly. But it's not about the loudness, it's about creating that shaping with the drums and the rest of the mix to have a slight squeeze and um, a slight, you know, breathing element. So I would keep it reasonable, uh, maybe 20, 10, 15, you know. Uh, of course, it, the percentage depends on the output volume coming out of this chain here. So don't worry, it don't, doesn't matter. Also, if you use an aux, it's going to be in dB. You're just going to raise the aux until you hear the effect. I'm just doing it in patch uh, The point is, it should just slightly squeeze the mix and you should hear like it's breathing ever so slightly and you should miss it and it should feel a bit more bland without it but you shouldn't really hear it. Just like that. Yeah, and it just makes the drums feel a bit more important without ha actually having to turn them up in the mix. So it's not going to work as good on every track because you need a track that has really loud drums to begin with, even if you boost them. Or you need a track that has um, pretty defined drums because, see, you could do it a different way. You could sidechain the drums to the pre-master. You could, you could uh, run your whole mix through a pre-master and use the drums to trigger the pre-master, something like that. Um, but the thing is, you need a drum that responds well to the compressor. You need a tight drum, um, or you need like a, a tight trailer hit. Because the thing is, if the tail of the compressor, as it releases, it's all like fluttered and artifacty, it's not going to work well. Um, and some compressors, even if you set the release a bit longer, uh, they will not breathe correctly. So you need to make sure that the compressor you're using kind of breathes uh, smoothly and responds well to the music. And it's not like, you know, as it releases, as it releases it's not like all dirty and <laughs> like that. Because I don't know if you try to compress um, a low drum with a big subtail, sometimes it just doesn't release correctly. So you need to make sure the type of track is good. Tight drum kits like that work well. Uh, because there is no point in introducing any dirty releases or artifacts into your mix. Um, so yeah, you want to pick a compressor also that doesn't have a very long attack because you're not trying to introduce more click. And since you're going to be smashing the mix in parallel, 
you don't want to introduce more transient with that smash. Uh, otherwise, even a little bit would add more clickiness to the mix, and that's not the goal. So just find for some find something that um, releases well. Like it shouldn't be too long or it shouldn't be too short. It should just respond well to the mix and create a groove. So yeah, guys, I hope that was interesting, and uh, I will see you next time. Bye.